Okay. All right. So welcome. Uh, this is um, getting most out of the TI-15 calculator, uh, central teaching and learning ideas. My name is Tom Reardon. Uh, taught at Fitch High School for 35 years in Ohio, <clears throat> 40 years part-time at Youngstown State University. And for many of those years, I taught the math for elementary and middle school teachers. Uh, senior math advisor for Texas Instruments for the past 13 years uh, and still doing that. And CPAM president uh, up until 2022. Um, all materials are available at this website. It is case sensitive. So welcome. Uh, congratulations, presidential awardees. So welcome to my home office in Columbus, Ohio. Um, use the chat to make comments, ask questions. Also, you can unmute and say, could you go over that again or, or repeat that or go slower? Um, the video will be available to view at your leisure. So I always start off with at least one quotation, and this is one of my more favorite ones. I am convinced that students learn in more ways than I know how to teach. Doesn't mean I've given up, it just means I'm still looking for other ways. So some of you may become irritated because I'm going too slow for you. I apologize in advance. Some think I'll be going too fast for you. Again, I apologize in advance. So please ask questions or, or have me repeat. And then those of you watching the video, you can pause, rewind, whatever. So the TI-15 is a very powerful calculator, though it's little and doesn't seem like it has a whole lot it can do. Um, I strongly urge to use it as a teaching and a learning tool, not just as an answer getter. In fact, that's my least favorite way to use it. Uh, I am gonna supply you with a 16 page primer on how to use this. In fact, the primer is what we're using this evening. I'm gonna do parts of it in, in order. <clears throat> You'll also get the full 126 page PDF with student activities and ideas. Uh, the primer is kind of a condensed version of that without the activities and ideas. And I sure, certainly hope you enjoy this. So this is the calculator, as you can see there. Um, and I'll point out where the keys are, where they need to be uh, as we're doing this. So the first thing I'd have you do, and I'm hoping you're doing this with me, uh, is to reset the calculator. And there are two different ways to do that. You'd wanna reset it just to get things back to normal, okay? So one way is to press the mode key, and the mode key is in the, it's a red and white key right here below the arrow keys. Press that and up will pop what you can see there. Uh, N and D, okay? Press the down arrow once, twice, three times, and it says reset, but notice right now it's underlined on N, so I'm gonna press the right arrow to go over to Y for yes, and then press the enter equal sign, which we'll do often right here. Either it's enter or it's the equal sign. So press that and memory is cleared. I'm gonna clear the display by pressing the clear button in the upper right corner. And the other way to um, memory clear is to simultaneously hold down the on off key on one side and the clear button on the uh, other side. So I'll hold those down simultaneously, let them go, memory cleared. So let me press clear to just clear that out. You will also notice that the TI-15 has a two line display um, and entries that don't fit on one line wrap around to the second line. When you use fraction, only one line is displayed. So it's a nice big display. Is there any questions? I'll pause just for a second. Okay, we move on. So mode, um, we're gonna build up to the, the really biggies first, okay? Oh yeah, again, question, let me know. So, um, the default settings when you're dividing answer displayed as decimals, okay, you can also express your answer as a fraction instead of as a decimal. So let's go ahead and do what's there, 85 divided by 7. So that's 8, 5, division sign, and then 7. And to get the answer, I'll press the enter equal sign down here in the lower right corner. And I'm getting that answer. Uh, with 10 significant digits, 10 digits there are displayed. I will tell you the calculator uses between 13 and 15 internally to do the calculations. So what you see is not always what you got, okay? If I change the mode to N over D, okay, um, 
then that will um, make the is a fraction instead of as a decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and press clear to go to the home screen. And I'm going to press the mode key. And I'm going to arrow to the right. So I'm underlining N over D for fraction. I have to press enter equals to lock that in. And you might notice in the upper, right above the N there, it has a little N over D division, the top to indicate that that's turned on. So I'm going to press the mode key to get out of that, or I could have pressed clear. And now when I divide 85 divided by 7 and press enter equals, it now gives me an answer of 12 and 1 seventh. This is an exact answer where the answer I had before was a decimal, even though it was to many decimal places, it was an approximation because that decimal keeps repeating. I'll stop any questions or comments so far. Okay. So um, use the mode key to add the calculator display decimal answers for division. So, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to press the F to D. So now we have as a fraction, uh, try to find the F to D key. It's about in the middle of the calculator, F to D. This goes from fraction to decimal or decimal to fraction. So if I press it once, it's giving me the decimal. If I press it again, it converts it back to the fraction. So I'll go ahead and press clear. So we've done numerator denominator. Let's see what else is on here. Uh, oh, this is just basically summarizing what we just did. So 85 divided by seven, we did that. We did the fraction. Not sure why I have this twice, I apologize. Not sure why I have that. So editing, inserting, and deleting, okay? The clear key either clears an entire line or clears an error message. And a key, uh, key on this is the blue backspace and delete key. Uh, it's right over here. It's the third key or second key underneath clear, okay? So that's a backspace and delete key. Deletes the character to the left of the cursor, okay? So it backspaces and like eats it up like a Pac-Man, if you're old enough to remember that. So I'm going to type in this awful looking um, uh, example here. Okay. Um, again, I, I get in the habit of pressing clear when I start. And notice I'm still in divi numerator, denominator, division. So let me change that mode. Go to the right to decimal point. You can see decimal point is underscored there. Press enter equals. And then press mode to get back. So now it's 4283 decimal point, five, seven, six, division, six, one, four, decimal point, nine, eight. And notice it kind of wraps to the next line. It does it nicely also. And I'll press enter. Oh, I did division. And I think it's supposed to be a plus. Boy, am I off tonight. So sorry about that. Let me go ahead and press clear and do that again. 4283 decimal point 576 plus 614 and 98 hundredths plus, sorry, answer. And you can see we get that answer right there. And oops, I was it was supposed to be that numbers, those numbers there. Okay. And so fortunately, this calculator has recall and editing features. So I'm going to press this up arrow right here at the top one time, and it takes me back to the previous calculation. And it has what I typed in. But uh, what I want to do is it should be a 976, not a 576. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and press the left arrow once. And when I do that, it gets rid of the equal sign. And now it lets me to go ahead and just go through the the numbers there. So I'd like to go all the way until I get to the number seven. And the reason I stop at seven, when I use the backspace and delete, it's going to delete the one before it. Okay. So I'm going to press the blue backspace and delete key. And now it's 0.76. 
and five is gone. I'm going to type in the nine and it inserts it where we were. So I have the 4,283.976 plus the number I wanted. I'll go ahead and press enter anywhere. It doesn't have to be at the end. And I'm getting the new correct answer. We're going to do another one in case I lost you on that. So I'm going to say oops again. And let's say we wanted these numbers here to be added. Okay. So again, I'll press the up arrow key to go back to the previous calculation. And I want the 4283.976 to stay there, but I want 6104.9128, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and press the left arrow once, and that deletes the equal sign. Until I'm moved to the 4 of the 614. So I'm sitting on the 4 of the 614. 14. I'm not going to delete anything. I want to actually insert a zero to make that 6,104. So I'll press the number zero and it inserts it and moves everything else to the right. I'll press the right arrow key until it's on the last eight. And I want it to have a one, two in front of that. <clears throat> so while it's blinking on the eight, I'll type a one and then a two. And let's double check and make sure that it's what we want. 4283.976 plus 6104.9128. And then I'll go ahead and press enter equals and get the correct answer. I will also point out that you can insert and delete or edit a calculation as you type it. It doesn't have to go back through the history, okay? And it's not just the previous one that's there. If you press the up arrow a couple of times, it'll take you through your history. And you can go back and say, oh, four times ago, like, for example, I have gone back to this one with the division, brought that back, and then changed that division to a plus sign. But I'm just going ahead and press clear. Right. So let me see here. Okay. Questions or comments? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Somebody. No, no questions. Oh, okay. Thank you, Stephanie. All right. So next one is uh, what's called inner division or integer division. Okay. Uh, and this will give you remainders instead of decimals. Okay. Or fractions. So for this one, again, press clear. I'm going to take 85. And I'm not going to press the division key. I'm going to press the inter divi into integer division key. I'll press that, then the seven, and then press enter equals. And it's telling me 12 remainder one. So if, you're, if your students haven't gotten to fractions or decimals, then this is the perfect calculator for you to use that. Let's try another example. Uh, 247 integer division by 21. So I'm going to go type in 247 integer division 21 and then press enter. And it says it's 11 remainder 16. And I like to have my students check, show that these check. So that means if I take the 21 and multiply it by the 11, and add the remainder of 16, I should get back to the 247, which was the divisor. Dividend, sorry, the dividend. All right, memory keys. Well, we would all love to have memory keys, the ones with M's. One of them is an arrow to memory. The other is memory or me memory recall or memory clear, okay? So those are the two right here that we're talking about. And this is if you do a calculation and you wanna store that result temporarily because you wanna use it in a later calculation. So for example, um, let's say I'm going to multiply those two numbers together, okay? 
and uh, I want to use that to do some other calculations. So uh, let me go ahead and press clear. And I'll type 423 decimal point 1789. The times sign. And then the 4.68757. Let me double check that before I do anything. And I'll press enter equals. And I'm getting this answer and I'm pointing out that you'll notice that this is not the, the exact answer because if you look at seven times nine, the last two digits, it should end in a three. And we don't have enough decimal places to show that. So just be aware, I'm just pointing that out. What I'd like to do is store that into the memory location and we only have one. So I'm gonna press the arrow M key. And once I, and then I will go ahead and press enter. And there's a big M about a third of the way over from the left right there, capital M, which says there's something in the memory location. Okay, in this case, it's that number with more significant digits. So I'm going to go ahead and press clear. And I still have that number in memory. Don't worry about it. So let's do another calculation like 97 divided by 19. 97 divided, the regular division, 19. Enter equals. And we get this number. And let's say I want to multiply that answer by what's stored in memory. OK, so I'm going to take that number and multiply what's stored in the memory key. So I'm going to press the uh, times key. And it says take that number. By the way, you'll notice it's showing more significant digits when I when I do that. OK. Um, and then I'm going to press the memory recall key once. Don't press it twice. And up pops that number with as many significant digits as it can show. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the enter equal sign. And now we're getting that answer again to 10 digits showing. So I really like the memory um, recall feature, the memory feature. That's probably more for older kids, but just whatever works for you. Again, I'll pause and see if there are any questions. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Not yet. <laughs> oh, oh, not yet. Okay. Okay. We're good. All right. So make sure you understand a number stored in memory remains there until one of three things happens. Another memory number is stored into memory to take its place. If you reset the calculator, everything clears out. Or if you press the memory recall memory clear key twice, because the first time it's memory recall, the second time it clears what's in memory, okay? All right, so the Pi key, um, let's go ahead and look at the Pi key. That is located uh, above the number seven, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and press clear to do that. Uh, in fact, I think I'll do memory clear also, just get rid of that number twice, press that. And you'll notice it, uh, the M disappeared, press clear, and so, um, there's nothing stored in memory right now. So I'll press the Pi key with nothing in the display and press enter. And it just shows Pi, which is an exact answer. Pi is you know, a symbol for this number, okay? But if I want to see the decimal approximation, I'll use the F to D key, uh, fraction to decimal, decimal to fraction. Notice the arrow goes both directions. And I get that to um, 10 significant digits though internally it might be 13 to 15. So let's go ahead and, and use that to find the area of the shaded region of this, what I will call a donut, okay, which is- I'm sorry, I have a question. Oh, sure. How do you get to the fraction that, the fraction of pi? Um, remember, pi isn't actually a fraction, okay? The 22 sevens that we use is not an exact answer. So there's so right. so uh, we want to use pi to as many significant digits as we can. So the pi key goes to that. The 22 sevenths is a, a kind of thing of a past, I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
Sure, good question though. All right, so getting back, I wanna find the area of this shaded region like a donut, okay? Uh, I've got a circle whose radius is uh, from O to B is eight centimeters, from O to A is five centimeters. And so I'm gonna find the area of the big circle, subtract the area of the little circle to get the area of the donut, okay? And so again, I'll press clear. That's just a habit I like to start in case so I'm not surprised by anything. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and type in, now this is a little bit maybe more advanced than what your students would do, but this is to illustrate the calculator. I'm gonna type in 64 and then the pi key, because that would be eight squared, the radius squared times pi would be 64 pi, minus the ra other radius is five, five squared is 25, so it'll be 25 pi. And when I subtract that, I get 39 pi, which again is an exact answer, 39 pi square centimeters, okay? But I need to again use the F, the D key to be able to get the decimal approximation. And we could round it to as many significant digits as we need. We want to go to the nearest tenth or hundredth or thousandth, whatever that may be. Now, another way would be using the memory key. So I'm gonna go ahead and press clear. And I'm gonna find the area of the smaller circle first. So that would be, again, 25 pi. And I'm going to press memory, store into memory, the arrow memory, and then make sure you do press enter. Oh, I got a memory arrow. Let me try that again. Oh, 25 pi, and let me do F to D, make it a decimal. So I press enter, then press make it to a decimal. Now I'm going to store it into memory and press enter. And I get that capital M, so I know that it's stored there. And then I'm going to take the larger area, I'm going to press clear, which is 8 squared 64 pi and subtract memory recall, enter equals, and get the same answer just using the memory, the memory, store into memory and memory recall. I would rather do it the first way, I'm just illustrating the other one. So this comes with, with your question before, with the use of a calculator, there's no reason to approximate pi with either 3.14 or 22 sevenths, uh, except the practice is to use the calculator's approximation for pi, which is really good, uh, and then round the final answer. Uh, answers using in terms of pi um, is encouraged by the NCTM, National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. I'll leave that for you though, to decide by the level of your students. Questions, comments? Okay. How is the pace? Too fast, too slow? Okay. Good for me. Me too. Okay, great. All right. So um, let's find the area of a sector of a circle, which may be beyond um, you know, the elementary, more, more of the upper elementary, okay? Uh, I want to find the area of this piece of pi, okay? So I'd find the um, area of, um, let me see how I was going to do this, yeah. Find the area of the circle, which would be pi r squared, 36 pi. Uh, let me press clear to start, 36 pi, enter. I'm going to convert that to a decimal. And then I'm going to press that to store into memory. Notice I already had a number there. So when I press enter, the M is still there, but what's in the new value? This new value is now the one. Now, seven, 70 out of 360 is the fractional part of that circle. Remember, 360 degrees in a circle, 70 degrees is our piece of pi, so to speak. So I'm going to divide, I'm going to press clear and divide 70 by 360 and get that decimal. And I'm gonna multiply that decimal 
times the area of the whole circle, which is in the memory recall, which is in the memory. So I'll press times, press MR one time. It's going to take that point 1944 and multiply it by that 36 pi and give me an answer of almost 22 square centimeters. Again, just if this isn't what you teach, you're learning how to use the calculator. And if it is, great. All right, the square root and raised to a power key. Okay, those are about in the middle of the calculator right here. Uh, the square root, and that's called the caret, that like exponentiation key is called a caret. So I'm going to go ahead and press clear, and I'm going to hit memory clear twice and clear that as well. I could have also reset the calculator. So to find the square root of 64, which we know, I'll take type in the square root sign, and you'll notice it has a left parentheses. So be aware of that, 64. And so since it has a left, you have to finish with a right or it will give you an error. So for example, don't do this. I'm going to press enter, and it's going to say syntax error. So I'll press clear. And I'll go back and then I'll finish off putting in that parentheses so it knows I'm finished. That's what goes inside underneath the radical sign, the square root sign. And of course, I'm getting eight. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, compute the square root of 220, 225. So again, I'll press clear. Square root 225, right parentheses before you press enter. And it says, check the answer. Well, remember, if it's the square root, that means whatever I get for the answer, I square that and I get the number under the radical sign, that 225. So I'm just going to go ahead and press caret. And when I press caret, it takes the last answer, 15, says raised to the power 2, enter equals, yeah, it does check. We'll try that with a different number in case I went too fast. Press clear. Take the square root of 289. Make sure you put a right parentheses and enter 17. I'd like to check that that's correct. So again, I could type 17, but I think I'll just type caret. And it says take the last answer and do something to it. In this case, raise it to the power 2. Enter equals 289. So yeah, that does check. Now I've only been doing whole number answers. We're going to look at decimals in a minute. So let's go ahead on to that. The square root of 10. And we're going to round to the nearest thousands once we're done with this. So again, I'll press clear. Square root 10, right parentheses. Okay, we're or a half hour in, that's my marker there, square root of 10. And there is no whole number that when I multiply it by itself that I'm going to get 10 exactly, okay? So I'll press enter, and I get this decimal number, okay? And we could round it to whatever we need to round it to because it doesn't come out perfectly. If I mul Okay, and just to show you that, let's check the answer, okay? Um, I'm going to... Type in, I'm going to press clear. I'm going to type in that, that number there. We got for an answer, 3.16. Oops, I have too many sixes. So I'll backspace and delete that one. 2277766. We double check, 3.16227766. Raise to the caret second power. So it's going to calculate, it's going to multiply that by itself, square it. And you'll notice I'm not getting exactly 10. I'm getting really close. I mean, you can't get much closer than that to 10. And the reason for that is, again, since I'm multiplying 6 times 6, my last answer is going to end in a 6. It's not going to be perfect, okay? Now, this time I'm going to calculate a little bit differently. I'm going to press clear. I'll take the square root of 10 again. Make sure you put the right parentheses there at the end. 
enter equals. And instead of copying the number again, typing it in, I'm going to type in the caret. And you'll notice I'm getting more significant digits because it, it has more significant digits stored, second power. And now when I square that with more significant digit, more decimals, I'm getting exactly 10 for an answer. The reason for that is it's so close to 10, rounded to 10 decimal places, it is 10. Whereas before I had, I didn't have as many significant digits. So depending on the level of your student, I'm hoping students can have an educated guess about what the square root of 10 should be approximately. So the square root of 10, if you look at the screen here, uh, is between the square root of nine and the square root of 16, which is between three and four as whole numbers. And since this is closer, 10 is closer to nine than it is to 16, it should be much closer to three, and it is. It's about 3.2, 3.16. Just looking for some uh, understanding, some number sense here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the square root of 40. Again, I'd, make an I'd like to have my students make an educated guess, at least to the nearest whole number. Like, was it between what two whole numbers would it be? And I'm hoping things, since 36, the square root of 36 is 6, square root of 49 is 7. It should be between 6 and 7. So again, I'll press clear and take the square root of 40, right, parentheses. And if I type that number and square it, I'll get close to 40. If I just raise it to the second power, I'll get exactly 40. Let me stop there. Any questions about square roots? All good. Good. All right. Uh, raising to the power, it doesn't have to be a two. It could be a three or whatever else you want to use for your exponent. So again, I'll press clear. If I want to do something like 15 to the third power, it's caret three and then enter. And I could double check that by saying what's 15 times 15 times 15 and see that we get the same answer. So use this as a, a teaching tool as well as just an answer getter. So rounding on the TI-15, there's a key called the fix key. It's on the left-hand side, about in the middle. It's a red key, red and white letters, okay, fix key. So I'm going to go ahead and press clear. And I'm going to type pi plus 1, pi plus the number 1, and press enter. And instead of 3.14, I'm getting 4.14, whatever pi is, okay? So I'd like to round that to the nearest hundredth and see what the answer is, okay? So I'm gonna press fix and then hundredth key, point zero point zero one, and it shows me the answer to the nearest hundredth. So students can, this is a way for students to say, I think this is the answer and they can check their answers, okay? Without having to ask you, all right? Uh, you'll also notice the word fix at the top of the display so that you know you're in that. Uh, if you want to go to the nearest thousandth, press fix and then the last key, thousandth, and it'll round your answer to the nearest thousandth. You could go to the nearest whole number, fix, and then one, and this rounds to four. So we'll go ahead and do another example so that you feel comfortable with this. Oh, before we do that, to unfix it, so if you want to turn fix off, you just go ahead and press fix followed by decimal point. And the fix goes away and the original answer comes back. Can you do that again, please? Like five plus one and then fix because I was looking at the wrong key. Okay. So do you still have the, the number in your display? Pi plus one, do you still have that? Well, I'll tell you, I'll just do it again. Yes. 
Look, so I'll do pi plus one, okay? And so now what I'd like to do is round it, let's say to the nearest 10th. So I'll press the fixed key followed by the 10th key. And then it tells me that 4.1 is the answer rounded to the nearest 10th. And if I press the hundredth key, press the fixed key, and then the hundredth key, it shows me what the answer to the nearest hundredth. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another example and hopefully and, and see if that works for you as well. So we're going to multiply these two terrible. Yeah, yes. My results haven't been the same. I'm trying to see where my mistake is. Okay. I have pi plus one. No, no, not, no, 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 no. Pi, the number pi. I, I said that. Oh, yeah. Pi, pi plus, one. plus one. Okay. Equals, and I got four and one four and a bunch of digits. Mm -hmm. All yep. right. Mm -hmm. And then six. Mm -hmm. Six. And then All say right. the tenth. Nothing happened when I hit fix. No, but when you press one tenth, it should do something. Okay. I got it. Thank you. And so, yeah, you have to press the one tenth before the fix pops up. And then you press fix each time. So fix, say a thousand. Okay. Fix, say a hundredth. How's that? Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Then, Sure. And, and then, then you said to make fix go away, it's clear fix? No, it's fixed decimal point. Huh. Fix followed by the decimal point key. Oh, okay. Thank and then you. and then I'm gonna press clear. Good job. Glad you asked. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and multiply 34 and 75 hundredths times 123 and 61 hundredths. And we're going to find, we're going to round the answer to each one of the answers just so that we see them all. So again, I press clear, 34.75, the time sign, 123.61. Let me double check it before I press enter. Enter. And I'm getting that answer. And I'd like to round it to all the places that are listed there, okay? So th there's my answer, okay? I'm going to try fix a thousand first. So I'm going to press the fix key, follow it by the thousand, and to the nearest thousand, this rounds to 4,000. Fix and then 100 is 4,300. Fix and ten. It's the same answer because it, there's it's, it's forty three hundred. It's not doesn't have any tens. Okay, so it's the same answer. So go ahead and double check and make sure you agree with those answers there. Give you a chance to go ahead and and make sure you you're getting those. And if you're not, let me know and I'll talk to you about it right now. Yes. Perfect. All right, again, I'm going to turn off the fix and then decimal point and clear. All right, we, we talked about the history before. I thought I would just show this again, okay? So uh, I'm going to have you enter these four calculations, which are they're, they're just to use as examples. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in one plus two, e enter equals. Okay, not surprisingly, I'm getting three. Uh, three plus four, enter equals. Five plus six, enter equals. And seven plus eight, enter equals. So I'll I'll, I'll slow down a little bit. Right now, you should. After doing those four, you should now have seven plus eight equals 15. And I'm going to say, oops, I really meant to be nine plus eight. And I'd like to just use the history feature. OK, so uh, since it's already there, I'm just going to press the left arrow one time. And what that does is it gets rid of the 15 and the equal sign so that I can edit the calculation. 
So I'll press the left arrow until I'm sitting uh, is is to the right of the plus sign. like on top of the plus sign. And I'm gonna do the blue backspace and delete key, which gets rid of the seven and type the nine. And now it's nine plus eight, press enter. If I press the up arrow a few times, until you see the three plus four equals seven and the five plus six equals 11. Just wanna see, show you that it shows you your previous history in order. And so when I press the left arrow this time, surprisingly, it starts with the top one, not the bottom one. You need to be aware of that, okay? So I now I can edit this to be say three plus eight. So I can backspace and delete the four and type in eight and then press enter equals. So just take a minute right now and go back up through the um, history a little bit and just edit something very simple, just, just so you feel comfortable doing that. So when I revisit the line, whatever I'm editing is now the becomes the last line. I'm sorry. What was that again? When I when I edit a line, when I arrow up to it, that three plus four, okay. it came down to the bottom because I had to arrow back up to see the other stuff that was there. Um, not. So like right now, if you look at my screen, I have this on the screen. What, what would you want to do here if you were trying to do something? No, I was, when I went, okay, so arrow up, please. And there's that three point, uh, three plus four. Okay. But when I went there and um, arrowed to the three, everything after it disappeared. Okay, so if I press the left arrow key, like, is that what you did? Or something like that? Right, and right. So, and now that's the bottom line. Okay, so if you, you arrowed to where? If, if you, Okay, so if I hit enter equals right now, then it, it'll say three, yes, it'll say three plus four equals seven. Right. All the stuff that was originally after three plus four is now above it. Right. Yeah. Because this is the new line. Right. Okay. Right. Because this, it keeps adding lines on. So if you take a line that was say the second line and edit it, it it's still the second line, the, the original, but now the new one is you're at the bottom. It's at the bottom. You're right. Okay. It's like a stack. Think of like a stack of pancakes. Okay. Okay. Good question. All right, fractions. Now we're getting into, I think the second part of this is a little bit more interesting, I think has some, some cool features here, okay? Uh, so again, I'm gonna press clear, okay? And we're going to look at manually simplifying fractions, which is what I prefer, but you do what you wanna do. Can you, hopefully you can find these um, eight keys right here in your calculator. Uh, this one is unit, meaning the unit of a mixed number. Simp is simplify, we don't reduce. Okay, we simplify fractions. Uh, numerator, denominator, this is a mixed number to fraction and fraction to mixed number, fraction to decimal, the frac key and fac for factor. Okay, the factor, and we'll talk about what that means. So let's go ahead and type in 24 36. And the way we do it is we type in a 24 and say, that's the numerator. Then we type in the 36 and press enter, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and type in the 24, press numerator and say, and you can see it makes a fraction, putting 24 as the numerator. 36 is in the denominator, so I don't need to type anything else. And when I press enter, it says 24, 20, 36 is equal to 24, 36. But in the upper right corner, 
it says big N over D arrow to small N over D, meaning this fraction can be simplified. Okay, it's not in simplest form. Let me stop because I want to make sure I have everybody. Is everybody here so far? Both of you here so far? Good. Okay. All right. All right, so um, we're going to press the simplify key, simp. And it'll say arrow S for simplify. And we're going to simplify it by a factor of three because we think three goes into both 24 and to 36 evenly. So I'm going to say simplify by a factor of three. Press enter equals. And it simplifies it to eight twelfths. It's simpler, but it's still, you can see the big N over D to small N over D. It's still not finished. So I'm going to press simplify again. And do this maybe by a factor of two. Enter equals. And it does that. Still not simplified. So I'll simplify one more time with a factor of two. And no big N over D to little n over D. That is in simplest form. And yes, I could have done this and divided by uh, 12 right away, it would have worked. I could divide it by six and, and done it in a different order, okay? And we're gonna do other ones. So if that was too fast, don't worry, we will do other ones. But I like the fact that the students have to decide what they factors they're using, not just to have it do it automatically, which this calculator will do. So let's go ahead with 108 uh, divided by 126. I'm going to go ahead and press clear. So um, I'll type in 108 and say, yes, that's the numerator. Press the N key. Type in the 126 and make sure you press enter. So the calculator knows that you're finished entering in the, the uh, fraction. Uh, this time, uh, I'm just going to press simp and press enter. And you can see that it did simplify it, but not completely. Looks like it used a factor of two. In fact, if I wanted to know what factor it was, I'd press the fact key and it says, yeah, you simplified by a factor of two. I'll press clear. And I'm gonna go back up and grab that last one again. and press the left arrow and press enter again. And I'm gonna press simp and simplify that one. And simp and simplify that one. And notice it stopped putting big N over D to little n over D and that is the simplest form. By the way, using that fact key, I probably should have done it there. I should have just had you do the simp, simp, simp. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that one. Um, I prefer that the students type in what the factor is, but uh, whatever, you know, what you're trying to get across, you use what you need to do there. So uh, this time we're going to follow that fact rule. So I'll, I'm going to go back. I'll press clear and enter that in again. 108 in the numerator. 126, enter. And again, I'll do the simp, enter. And I'll press the fact key for factor. And when I press enter equals, it takes me back to the previous one, which I didn't do the last time and I apologize. Um, so now I'm going to press simp and enter on the next fraction. <laughs> and see what factor was used there, and it was a three. Press enter, not clear. And simp again, enter. And factor to see that it was also a three. And enter equals to see the final answer.
So let's go ahead and do some computations with fractions and mixed numbers. So again, I'll clear. Uh, and I'm going to add 2 thirds and 3 fourths. So um, I'll take 2 and say that's in the numerator. 3. When I press the plus sign, it automatically takes it out from the denominator. OK. Uh, and then I'll type in 3. That's in the numerator. 4. Double check that you have the two thirds plus the three fourths. Press enter equals. And it's giving me an answer as a mixed number. If I wanted to see that as a decimal, fraction to decimal key, press it again to go back. It's a toggle on and off. So leave it as a mixed number. Right above the F to D key is mixed number to fraction. So go ahead and press that key once and it makes it into a fraction. Press it again and it puts it back as a mixed number or a mixed numeral. So you can play around with whether you want a decimal, a fraction, a mixed number, whatever. Let's go ahead and try this one, 7 eighths minus a third. So I'll press clear. 7 numerator, 8 minus 1 numerator, 3. Now, mixed numbers, let's try some mixed numbers uh, here. So for this one, with the whole number, you have to type in the whole number and then the unit to tell the calculator that this is a whole number or a unit. So I'll press clear. So two, make that a unit. And notice as soon as I do that, it's already got me in the numerator, the fraction. So I don't have to type the N, I can just type in the one. And if I do type in, I could type in the N, I guess, for that. But I'm thinking, yeah, I think I'll type in the N for that to say that's the numerator. Three. Type in the time sign, which takes it out from the denominator. And then the four, and that's a whole unit. Five is in the numerator, six. So double check, see if that looks like two. And I love the fact that it looks just like what it looks like on the paper. Two and a third times four and five, six. Enter equals and does all the calculations for me. And we can go ahead and make it in all different um, representations. I can write it as a decimal, F to D. I, I can... Uh, press the mixed number key, press the F to D and go back to the fraction. I can make it a fraction. I can go back to a mixed number. And so let me stop there for a minute because we did a lot with fractions. How are we doing? You okay? Silence brings consent. Okay. We had put on our video and we were nodding very aggressively at you. <laughs> What's that? You thumbs up. <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm sorry. I can't. I That's my okay. screen's full. My screen's full. So okay. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. Okay. Because I'm using a document camera that I've never used before. Um, um, that's taken up my whole screen. I don't even want to see me. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad thumbs up. Good. That's good. All right. Uh, a simple one, six divided by a half. So I'll press clear. Um, six. And then uh, division. And then one is in the numerator. Two. And we're getting 12, though, you know, a lot of our students think it's three, too many of them. So, um, but they trust this blue box more than they trust us sometimes. 
Okay. All right. The, the frac key um, tells you how you want your fraction answers to be displayed, either as a mixed number or as a fraction, uh, and whether or not you want to simplify manually or automatically. Okay. So the default, which are my preferred settings, but that's me, is to write your answers as a mixed number if it can be, and students have to manually simplify the, the answer. Okay. But I'll show you how you get around that if you want to do different things. So, so let's look at an example of fractions being automatically simplified. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and press clear. And I'm type the frac key. And up pops this. And notice what's underlined is a mixed number, which I'm fine with. So I'm going to press the down arrow to go to the next thing in the mode which is either manually or automatically simplify. And we said we wanted it to go to automatic. So I'm gonna press the right arrow. So automatic is underscored. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, press mode to get out of it, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna type in 24, numerator, 36. And now when I press enter, it will automatically simplify that fraction. Ooh. It didn't. Did I do somewhere? I guess I must have. Okay, so let me try that again. Mode. I'm sorry, not mode. So, um, frac. Down arrow. Oh, it didn't take. Maybe I didn't press enter. Ah, I didn't press enter. My fault. And you can see that auto appeared at the top of the screen there. Okay. I'd like to say that I did that on purpose to get your attention, but I did not, okay? So automatic, okay? Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and press clear. And let's do 24, numerator 36, enter. And you can see that it automatically simplified the fraction to two thirds. Go ahead and it type a in. Lot that time. <laughs> What's that? So that it worked a whole lot better that time. Yes, yes. Um, so if we go back to manual mode, let's just go ahead and try manual mode. So again, I'll press the frac key. I'm okay with mixed numbers down here. Left arrow over to manual and press enter on manual. Notice automatic turned off. And then I can press mode to get out of that. Okay. Um, and if I type in, let's say, um, nine twelfths, nine numerator twelve, that should that won't simplify. I'm going to have to notice again. They get the big N over D, the little N over D. I have to simplify that. By the way, if I try to simplify that with the wrong factor, like two, it doesn't simplify because it can't. It doesn't tell you it's an error. It just doesn't do it. So simplify by a factor of three, and that seems to work. All right, anything on fractions before we go on? I'm good. Good, okay. So percent and convert to percent keys. Uh, hopefully you can find those. They're above the number seven, above the pi key. Uh, one is 2%, the other one is percent key itself. So again, I press clear and I'm gonna take 40% and write it as a decimal and fraction, so 40 and I'll type in the percent key and press enter. And it's giving me as a decimal. And if I want it as a fraction, I'll press the F to D key. And then I'm gonna have to go ahead and simplify that by a factor of two, unless I had it on automatic. If I had it on automatic, it would have come up as two fifths. So write as a decimal as a percent. You press clear. Let me type in 0 0.04. This time I want to convert this to a percent. So I'm going to use the key above the other one, 2%, arrow percent. And it's telling me that it's 4%, which it is. To write a fraction as a percent, uh, let's like to take, let's say, 3 4. So I'll take 3 in the numerator four, 
convert that to a percent, enter, and I'm getting 75%. And if I type in, change that to a decimal, I'll go to fraction and go to decimal. Okay, kind of just play around with that. Uh, stored operations um, is something a lot of teachers might not want to use. I'll show it to you real briefly and see if this works for you. Um, so I go ahead and press clear. And find the op one and the op two keys. They're about in the middle of the calculator. So I'm going to type the op one key. And my operation one is going to be to add five to the previous answer. And then I type in op one again. And when I do that, it puts op one in the, in the top of the screen, okay? So notice I start, start with op one, do the, the calculation and then op one, not enter, okay? So to see how this works, let me press clear. I'll type in four and I'm gonna perform the operation in op one, which is add five by pressing op one and I'm getting nine. If I press it again, it's gonna add five to that previous answer. And notice we're just keep adding fives. Op two is done very similarly. If I press clear, uh, the op two is gonna be multiply your answer by three. So op two times three, op two. And now I have an op one and an op two, both in the top. So let's go ahead and do the powers of three by typing in clear and going one and do op two on that, which is times by three. When I press op two again, it's gonna take that last answer three and multiply that by three. Take nine and multiply that by three by pressing op two. And we're basically getting the powers of three. So you could think you could teach this as a teach subtraction or a multiplication is a repeated addition. Exponentiation is repeated multiplication. Division is repeated subtraction. Uh, just 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 op some ideas there for you. To clear out the uh, operation in op one and or op two, uh, press the mode key. Arrow down once twice and notice I have op one is underscored and um, I'm gonna go ahead and press enter to clear that. And I'll go over to the right and press enter to clear op two. And now they're both cleared. You can see there's no op one and no op two there. If you leave them in there, they're okay. It doesn't matter. You just can, you know, overwrite them the next time. All right, now we're getting into the, the fun the fun part, the part I like the best about this. Uh, before we do that, let me pause and see if there are any questions. I'm good. Okay. All right, so I'd like you to find- I'm good. The, you're good too? All right, good. Uh, in the upper, almost in the upper left-hand corner, there's a key that looks kind of like a maze. This is the problem solving key. I call it the electronic flashcard key. You can call it the maze key, okay? Uh, it, it, it takes you to a whole different part of the calculator and the mode key is now gonna work differently than, when you're, than what we were doing before, okay? So um, let's go ahead and press the maze key one time and up pops some kind of operation. Okay, I'm not sure it's always, may not be four plus five equals question mark like mine is, don't worry about it. Um, I'm gonna press the mode key once and it's gonna say yes or no momentarily. And then it's gonna, it's gonna go to the words auto and manual and auto is underlined. So we're gonna leave it in auto mode. And right now you're saying, well, I don't know what that means. Hang in there for a minute. So press the down arrow once, and I'll stop here to make sure we're at that spot. So these are the levels of difficulty, one the lowest, two medium, three the most difficult. I mean, tell me both of you, tell me yes or no if you are there. If not, I'll get you there. Yes. 
Both? Maybe both said at the same time. Okay. So um, I'm going to press the down arrow another time. And when I do that, it's going to tell, do you want to do problem solving with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or question mark? And leave question mark alone for right now. But let's leave it at plus sign. We'll leave it at plus sign. So I'm going to press the mode key to get out of this mode and go back to my problem, to the, what I call flashcards. And so I'm going to do a couple of them. I'm going to miss them on purpose, and then I'm going to ask you to do some. But just watch here. So I'm going to say 4 plus 5. I'm going to go with 9. Press Enter, and it says yes. Now you might know what that yes, no means. 3 plus 7 is equal to, I'm thinking it's 11. And it comes back and says, no, 3 plus 7 is smaller than 11. So it not only tells me I'm wrong, it tells me which direction. So I'm going to go with, say, 10. Ah, yes, I did get that one. 2 plus 0 is equal to 5. No, it's smaller than 5. Um, 1. No, it's bigger than 1. 4. No. And it gives up. Gives up on me. After I miss it three times in a row, it says, look, the end, that's what the answer was, too. Okay. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and try a couple of those. Get them right. Get them wrong. Just so you can see how they, that works. This is level one edition. Let me give you a minute to do that. And every five questions, it will give you your score so far. Even if it took you more than one try to get it, uh, it still counts as a yes. If you get it in the first or second try, the third try, though, it's, it's a miss. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, change the level and or operation. So let me show you how you do that. So I'm still on mode automatic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press the mode key. And again, just temporarily gives you yes and no. Uh, I'm okay with automatic, so I'll press the down arrow again. Uh, this time I'm going to arrow to the right over the number two and press enter. Um, so that's the level. I'm going to press the down arrow to get the operation. Let's go over to multiplication and press enter. And that's as far as you can go. So now I'm going to press mode to get out of that part and go back to questions. And so now it's nine times what is equal to 900. Now notice the numbers are bigger. Okay. So go ahead and try your answer there. And uh, sometimes the question mark is in the left side. Sometimes it's on the right side. Go ahead and try an example or two. Hey, Tom. Yes. My husband just got home and we've not been to eat yet. So I'm going to slip out and I will catch the rest of it on the video. Okay. Yeah, there's not much left. So you, you make sure you fast forward to the end there. Oh. Okay, thank you so much. This is going to be a lot of fun for my kiddos. And I can't wait to share it with my math teachers too. So great. this is going to be yeah. fun. Yeah, great. Okay, you have a good dinner. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, so let's say we want to go to level three. So again, I'll press mode. Temporarily gives me yes or no. I'm still on automatic. So press the down arrow. I'll go over to three and press enter. And this time I'm going to go down and go over to question mark because it might be different than you think it is. So I'm going to press enter on question mark. And then to continue, I press mode to get out of the mode. 
And now the question mark is where the operation is. And so this is helping students develop number sense. Do I add five to get 199? Do I subtract it? Do I multiply it? Do I divide it? Okay. So really good for number sense with larger numbers. Okay. I'll type in the minus sign and yes. Seven, what? Okay, do I multiply? Do I subtract? Whatever it is, okay. Um, so I'm going to go with subtract. And it's telling me, no, it's smaller if I do subtract. So I'll do add. Okay. All right. And let's go with manual so you can see what manual is and we're getting close to the end so thanks for hanging in there okay um so this time i'm going to press mode and i'm going to arrow over to the right to manual make uh -huh. sure you press enter on manual okay <laughs> and then press mode so in this students students can make up their own problems so you can say something like four plus five, enter, and now they have to, and then uh, put in the, um, type in, let's say nine, and it'll tell you if you're right or not. You can also put in things like six plus question mark equals 10, six plus uh, question mark. Where's the question mark? Oh, up here in the red. There we go. Question mark. Now, enter equals is your equal sign here. It's not enter. It's your equal sign. 10. So six plus question mark equals 10. Press enter. And it tells me there's one solution. And I'm going to guess the number four. And it's telling me yes. I can also do 12 question mark two, enter for equals six. Make sure you press enter. It says one solution. And then I can say, how about plus? No, nope, it's not plus. How about divide? Yep, that one works. So this one takes a little bit of doing, but once you got it, I think this is a really good tool for your students. Uh, for flashcards for learning their number facts because it tells them, gives them immediate feedback. Um, and to get out of the number problem solving, you just press the maze key again and the maze disappears. Notice there's the maze in the upper left corner. Press it again and you're out of the maze for problem solving mode. And I think the last thing we're going to talk about is place value. Um, so, and that one doesn't take long at all. Uh, it's also my second favorite thing on this because I think place value is really important for students. Place value key is between the maze and the mode. It's right, right there. That's the place value key. Um, but you do have to be follow directions real precisely. If you vary from them a little bit, it won't work. So just be careful. So this is, looks like a lot of keys, and it is. So I'm going to go real slowly. I'm going to press the maze key, the mode key. Make sure you're in manual, which we are, and I'll press enter to say we're in manual. Press the down arrow key, and here I have to go to the right to this part that looks like a minus, a vertical bar, and a minus. Press enter to lock that in, and then press mode to get out of it. So um, I'm gonna do this. If it didn't work for you, I'll come back and do it again, but I wanna see it work first. So I'm gonna type in this number 6384.196, but I'm not pressing enter. Do not press enter equals. To show the 10th digit, you press the place value key and then the point one key, and it shows you right where the tenth digit is. Again, I did place value one tenth. So if you're up to there with me, say yes. If not, I'll go back.
Yes. We're good? Good. Yes. Okay. All right. To show the hundredths key, press the place value key and point zero point zero one. It shows you where the nine is. And I love that it shows you right where it is. It just doesn't say nine. It shows you where it is. Um, and if you wanted to see the hundredths key, place value 100, and three is the hundred key. So to get out of place value mode, you press the maze key, and everything is now back to a normal calculator. So let me show you what's available, and then uh, we'll wrap this up, and I'll see if you have any questions. Um, I did also create a self-assessment uh, for this. It could be for you, for your students, whatever. Uh, the self-assessment has two pages. And then on the back, it has the answer, so you'll know if you're right or not, okay? Um, and all of this can be found at the website that I had mentioned before. Um, let me give you that website, or do I have it on here? Yes, here it is. Um, this is the website, bit.ly in lowercase, forward slash P-A-E-M-S-T 2020, capital T-I for Texas Instruments. And on this, this is what's at that website. So I'll show you, it's, there's not a whole lot of stuff, but uh, let me show you what that, that is. So this is the website. If you click on this, you get the 15 page, 16 page primer, okay? Uh, and this is pretty much what we did tonight, okay? Um, it, it, I just copied and pasted these in and we did these just in order. So, um, You've now got those and you can go do this without the video if you want. The thing that, this is my, that 16 page primer is from me. It's, it's a summary of this 126 page PDF that TI supplies, uh, much fancier looking than mine, uh, but it has uh, activities that you can do, how to use the TI-15, uh, quick reference to keys and so on. So uh, again, I wouldn't print that out but you do have it as a reference. The video of the presentation, I'm going to send this out uh, tomorrow to everybody. And um, it, I'll, I'll have the link available sometime tomorrow. It's not there yet, okay? Um, and then education.ti.com. This is TI's website. Uh, lots of information there. Okay, I'll leave that for you. And if you ever need tech support on your calculator, you just don't remember how to use it or batteries or anything, they are super. 1-800-TI-CARES, um, that's the actual number. Um, so let me see if there are any questions. Nope. Well, thank cool. you for attending. Uh, hopefully this worked out well for you. Um, you now yes. know as much about this calculator as I do, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> which I think is about everything, so. Any, but nothing. Okay. Else. If I forget something, I, I know how to call 1 800 TI CARES. <laughs> That's right. They, they will talk to you right through it. Tell them I got a TI 15 and I want to know how to do this. Okay. Okay. Thank so you I'm, very much. This was very useful. Well, good. I hope whoever watches this gets to you, gets, feels that way too. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.